Hi, as an answer to Gorud and Panda and Juggernaut X, here's a video to set up outlines on objects we look at without having to use any post process effects. Before we start, a huge thanks to Unreal CG for his video showing how to set up a material that can work as a highlight. I am not a master of materials, but as I checked the setup, it was clear and easy to understand, and we will combine his material with my technique to highlight stuff. So, probably you think about using a line trace, huh? Wrong. Actually, I tried it at the beginning with the line traces, but the first thing is that it's impossible to disable the highlight as the events are actually triggered, but they fail to do their job because of so called ownership and it's also strictly connected to how we handle the outline to show up. The outline is just a duplicate of our mesh with outline material and we cannot destroy it from external actors, which in our case is the first person character that would handle the line trace. The second thing is that instead of handling it fully through player, we will use overlap events from the item actors we want to highlight and use a component added to the player to trigger the highlight events. May sound awkward, but it's actually convenient and works as intended, so let's get to work now. As you can see, there's already a static mesh I imported on my own. It's just for easier access when I need to explain, and as you can see, it contains two materials, which also is on purpose here. First of all, we need the outline material to mark different stuff to look like they are active, like here in the viewport when we click on the actors. So let's create one and name it Outline. Inside, let's click on the material output node and make the default setup a little bit different. We want the blend mode to be masked, shading as unlit, so it won't be affected by any lights or shadows, and it has to be two-sided. As we have this, let's add a vector parameter to control the color and a scalar parameter to control the size or thickness of the outline. The next thing is so-called vertex normal WS. Some deeper explanation is on hover and what it does is simply able to replace the material in space based on its location and our math, which in our case is a single float value called size. So we'll multiply them and connect to wall position offset. The next thing is a two-sided sign. This allows us to control which side we want to render. If we connect this, it will only show the outside, but if we add a node called 1-x, it will make this value negative and show only the insides of the mesh that uses this material. And this is what we will use to prevent covering our original mesh on the front side and make it appear on the back side. So basically this material takes the shape of our mesh, makes it bigger and shows only inside so it gets covered by the original mesh and looks just like an outline. Wonderful! Now like said before, we need a duplicate of the same mesh and the outline material has to be applied to all material slots in order to make it look correctly. But we want to make this happen on an actor at runtime, not by placing stuff on the map, right? So let's do it by creating a new actor. We'll add a static mesh as a parent here and just for preview purposes, we'll manipulate the mesh by adding a variable that will be visible when we click on this actor. The type is obviously a static mesh and now on the construction script we want to make the selection visible immediately in the viewport by setting the static mesh to our variable. Now let's place some items we want to highlight around, change their appearance a bit and start programming the logic that will highlight them. And before that I will import a cylinder mesh I created on my own, it has a pivot point on a side unlike the original cylinder that has it in the center, which makes it harder to walk as intended and with my mesh I am able to control the start location and the length. We will attach it to our camera so it will update overlaps in the direction we look at with some distance we like. Let's change it to have no collision, but to overlap on the dynamic objects like our player. Let's also disable the shadows and change the name. That's it for the player, we don't need any more code here, so let's head back to our some item actor. We'll use our static mesh to detect if it's being overlapped by anything by adding responsible events. From here we have to make a cast to our player, so it will respond with further code only if it's overlapped by this actor. Anything else will go through cast failed, so you can check for other actors from there as well. Now we also want to make the highlight to happen only if we overlap the cylinder we added, not the actor overall. 
And to do this, let's look on the overlap event. Pull out from the other component and search for equal to compare two objects with a branch. So basically we use this piece of code to make sure the thing that overlaps the item is the cylinder and only in that case run the outline logic. We also need this logic in the overlap end, so let's duplicate and connect everything and let's head back to the overlap begin to do the outline magic. What we'll do is to spawn a new static mesh component and also save it to a variable so we don't make too much spaghetti here. I like to have the code clear, you know? Now let's change the static mesh to our custom variable that is the selection of the mesh. We simply want to make a duplicate here. As a different static meshes have different amount of materials applied, we need to apply our outline material to every material slot. Let's grab our mesh and find get materials to get a full list of them. From here we want to know the length of it. We'll make a for loop, not for each loop, don't make this mistake. The first index is 0 and the last index is number of materials from the mesh minus 1. You probably ask yourself why not change the first index to 1 instead of subtracting the materials count. This is because the materials list is an array and it always starts with 0. If we make first index to be 1, it will skip the first material on the list. Now let's grab the mesh again and set the material to our outline where element index is the index of our loop, which I didn't connect in the video. Let's go back to the content browser and from the material we will make a material instance. This has some advantages and also you're able to control the values created in that material. And this is what we will use on the set material node. Great, now let's make the logic for when we don't look at the item anymore. First we want to check if the additionally spawned mesh does exist and isn't pending kill to avoid some runtime errors and finally we destroy the static mesh we created when the overlap was triggered. And look, it works pretty well, but it has a bug. It can highlight multiple items which isn't intended and we want to change that. We need to use our player again to store information about the item that is highlighted by adding a variable. The type is simply our sum item actor. This variable can be used now to let us know if we already overlap any item and prevent order to be highlighted if we do overlap one at the time. You could use a boolean, but this variable already can tell us if we overlap anything and also give us full access to the blueprint content of the item if we need it. It returns none by default, but our player cannot know about any item until we reference it. And for the variable that means that it's not valid now. This is a very important information and this is what we will use to determine whether we can highlight or not the item we just overlapped. In the sum item blueprint pull out from the cast to the player and use a set node for highlighted item variable and add info about self. That makes the variable valid as it stores a reference to the item itself now but before this should happen we need to check if there's any highlighted object or not. We'll do it by using is valid node and highlight only if it says that highlighted object isn't valid which for us means that it doesn't return any item actor. Now let's also make sure that when we don't look at the actor anymore we make the highlighted object variable empty so it will be invalid again. Now it will not highlight any item actor until the actually highlighted object isn't highlighted anymore by checking the validation of a reference. This is a very useful technique as I didn't need any kind of booleans telling me the highlights there or anything and also we can get and set information of this actor. So yeah, now it works as intended. We can play with the outline colors and thickness as well the cylinder size and also let's enable hidden in game option to make sure it doesn't bother us while playing. I hope that answers your question about how to highlight stuff our player is looking at. If you ask why it was not done using a line trace, believe me, that's what I tried at first with multiple different approaches and even if destroy event was run, the component wasn't removed at all and highlight effect remained and that's why I used this technique instead. If it was about highlighting nearest object in range regardless of camera angle, that also would need a line trace and is very easy to create. If you like to see this idea as a tutorial, let me know in the comments. The project from this video is downloadable on my shared Google Drive folder, link in the description. Thanks for watching and wish you best with your projects. Cheers!